This is Eddie from Nerdypedia.com and this is the second video in my Printerbot series. The previous video ended four months ago. I had a dead printer board but I did manage to get a new chip soldered in and get it all to work again. For the original printer bots at least there were some important upgrades that had to be done. The printer basically worked as advertised but there were some priorities to work out. I needed a fan, a better printing surface, critical spare parts and the wires tend to form dreadlocks. The kit was a little bit slack and it didn't have a mount for the Z-axis micro switch. But we can print our own. Here I'm printing on the bare surface with a, a fan off to the side to provide cooling. I used this uh, bare bed for a couple of weeks before I started using glass. This is what a difference a fan makes. The one on the right didn't have a fan and you can see that it's uh, kind of molten. I really didn't like the switch being on the back so I moved it around to the front and uh, later came up with this uh, locking variety. The Y limit switch missed the mark but fortunately we've got a printer so let's fix it. SketchUp isn't the greatest program for doing this sort of CAD but it's free and most of the the printer bot parts are available online and uh, can be downloaded and modified. The hosting and the slicing software isn't perfect either but it is quite good. It's open sourced and the slicer program has come up with quite a few updates in the time I've had the printer and uh, we can see improvements happening all the time. I'm printing on sanded glass now. This has just been stuck down with, uh, with a bit of, bit of silicone. Watching it doing the bridging is always interesting. And there we go, all finished. Back to SketchUp to design some standoffs which are being used here with etched glass. Note the ribbing on the prints which I'll discuss later. I designed a side mount for a, a 40mm fan to go on the extruder but I quickly replaced that with a system where I combined the extruder mount with a fan duct and I'm still using that today. I still had a cracked Y pulley so it seemed prudent to uh, print some spares. I increased the size of the bottom and uh, printed a spare in ABS but it was never used. My original small herringbone had a defective tooth but it worked perfectly but nonetheless I printed a couple in, uh, in green polylactic acid. These are being printed on smooth glass, the frosted side is down. The new gears worked perfectly and I'm still using them today. I didn't like the printer bot bouncing all over the place so I came up with these clamps. These are screwed down to a bamboo cutting board and the uh, connector up the top is a 60 amp power connector so that I could unplug the supply when I'm working on it. My filament handling left something to be desired so a bit more time on SketchUp, some more printing, some fiberglass tent pole and this is what I came up with. Speaking of power supplies, the power supply which you can see on the far right was a bit of a nuisance there so I devised a way to hang it off the back of the tray. And also note here that uh, I'm using green scouring pad as my insulator under the bed. 
this is uh, I tried a few things and this works and it's been working for about three months I used four magnets to hold the power supply in the holder I also trimmed away all of the unnecessary wires these may look like feet but they're actually replacements for the Y belt clip this is ribbing at its worst this print was done at 0.2 millimeters it was done most likely on a hot day and it's done with solid fill careful observation would have shown that this was not caused by a simple side to side wobble but I didn't observe carefully so I went through the process of locking the bot down and adding screws to tighten down the bearings, tighten down the smooth rods and a complete rigid frame around the outside. Now I'm not saying that printer bots never wobble and I'm not saying that the wobbles don't cause problems but the banding that I just showed you was not caused by a side to side wobble. It would be conceivable that a bent rod would push the uh, nozzle to one side and, and cause a band but you would expect a, a hollow on the opposite side and that isn't what happens what you see with this banding is there's a band all the way around uh, in every direction and not only that if you were to look inside you would find there's also a band as in a bulge on the inside in the same at the same height as the bu bulge on the outside the reason for the bulging is inappropriate Z-lift. A number of layers are printed too close together, then a number of layers are printed further apart, and the cycle repeats every rotation of the Z-rod. The reason why this is happening is probably complex, but the solution is very simple. The solution is to stop the Z-motors wobbling on their flimsy mounts. My temporary solution was to use some wooden wedges to stabilise the motors and immediately I had good prints. A longer term fix was to glue in these wedges and that worked fine. The bad ribbing really just applies to the plastic bot but there are smaller thread artifacts which are most likely common to all of them. In particular there's a, an artifact where you get a single compressed layer every revolution. I've got a fair idea what's causing this but I'll leave that for another time. This is the first print with the wooden wedges in place and the artifacts are almost invisible. And this cog doesn't look too bad either. There are of course two threads to give us problems, not just one. I designed a new mount with full Z motor bracing and while I was at it I did the Y motor as well. The Y motor is fine the way it is. Zip tied linear bearings work fine, but I like my way better. I've tried a number of printing surfaces, including glass and aluminium, and this 1.6mm stainless is my favourite. I've tried many surface coatings, including Captain, but this circuit lacquer is my favourite for PLA, but it sticks a little bit too well to ABS. You can watch some non-printer related stuff being printed while I wrap up. The printer bot, and in particular the kits, are not for everyone, but uh, for someone like me they're a pretty good way to get into printing. The basic uh, assembly is just good enough to uh, start printing functional parts and with a bit of tweaking you can get fairly stunning results. I'm still tweaking the printer and will probably continue to do so for the rest of the year. At the moment I've got a slight problem because I changed my threaded rods for full length rods to match the, uh, the long uh, smooth rods you've seen in the photos. I found the kit to be quite good value but unfortunately they've been discontinued uh, you can only buy wooden um, laser cut printers from a printer bot at the moment but uh, you could uh, 
buy a wooden one and print a plastic one if you so desired or you might be able to find plastic parts uh, online somewhere else. A shockwave went through the open source printer community a few days ago. If you don't know what I'm talking about, search Occupy Thingiverse. The core technology behind printers like this was developed by volunteers, mostly by the RepRap team. Brook acknowledges this and gives something back by releasing the design files. There are other companies who simply want to build printers based on this technology and claim it as their own and give nothing back. Think twice before giving money to a closed source company. They may be selling you a very similar product, but they're taking away your right to repair, to tinker and to share. That just about wraps it up. Um, at the moment my parts are still available on Thingiverse, that could change. Have a look at the, uh, the links in the comments below and if all else fails uh, you can find me at edm.com.